Hi everybody and welcome to my first video ever on YouTube. So for this first shot at all things tech, I wanted to look at a cheap way to, to build a game capable system. So what I've done here is assembled a whole bunch of different components found from the web and trying to do this just as cheap as possible. So let's start off with the CPU. Here we've gone with an Intel Xeon processor. Now this is an older enterprise grade system, but it's well capable in performing in today's systems because enterprise grade uh, CPUs were built to last. And so this CPU is sporting 14 cores and 28 threads. It is a uh, version three Intel Xeon. So that means that we're gonna be able to have access to DDR4 RAM, which we'll get into later. So here you can see it out and we've placed it and got it ready. Next, we can find our motherboard, which I was able to find on eBay. This is an X99 uh, chipset machinist motherboard. These come in different uh, makers from machinist uh, to a couple other off brands. You can also find name brands like HP and Asus out there, they're a little bit more expensive and can really limit your ability to uh, integrate RAM into it as they still predominantly use server RAM, which isn't going to be great for somebody who wants to, to play games or do more advanced tasks other than, you know, uh, word processing or, or checking your email. So you can see here, we found this system for just under $65. It's a nice micro ATX motherboard and it comes with a fan mount. So if you have kind of a stock cooler, you don't have to worry about finding a, a new mount for it. However, uh, we're gonna take this one off and we'll replace it later. So here you can see the, the die to mount the CPU in. This is an LGA 2011-3 setting. So this can accommodate your Xeon E5 V3s and V4s. If you're going with a V1 or just a base or V2 system, you're gonna need an X79 system. So the CPU slots in nicely. We can lock it down, make it nice and secure and comfortable and then move on with the rest of our build. Now for a hard drive, we're going with this crucial NVMe drive. These are great, they're fast, they're cheap. Uh, this is a 500 gigabyte version and Crucial is a really great brand. You can't go wrong with them. Um, so as we get this open, this is gonna slot nicely into the motherboard and we're really not going to have to use a lot of the space in our case now to, to mount traditional hard drives. You can, as, as a way of upgrading the system, maybe add extra hard drives to it because we've got those extra SATA ports. Now there's two slots on this motherboard, so we're gonna, we're gonna place the NVMe drive into the first position, and then it'll just screw right into there and be held nicely. And, and, and when the GPU is all put in in that, you're really not going to see this even but the airflow will be there to keep it nice and cool. It's important to notice that I'm building a lot of this on the, the tabletop before I actually place the whole system into the case. This just makes it easier to build. So next we'll move on to the RAM. And for this, I was able to pick up uh, a 16 gigabyte kit. So two sticks of, of eight gig DDR4 RAM. Um, this was purchased for, I think just about $40. We'll have something pop up here in a minute to show you the price. Now this RAM is standard RAM that you're going to find in any kind of actual gaming system. We're not limited again to the server RAM that is really meant for, for slower processes.
Now this being DDR4-3600 RAM, it's a little bit fast for our system, for our processor mostly, but it'll scale back, so that's not a problem. So if you can find something that's a, that's a little bit of a better deal, but might be a little overkill for the system, that's okay because your computer will scale it. Now when it comes to cooling, there's several options for, for your CPU. In our case, since again, we're trying to keep the price down, we're going with a more traditional fan and heat pipe design, but you could pair this with an AIO or a full on water cool cooling system. Really, you're just limited by how much you wanna spend. So this system, we actually found it a great deal on Amazon and uh, we're able to get this under $40. Now this comes with all the mounting hardware that you're going to need, and you'll see in a little bit that they actually threw in a little bit of thermal grease, which is great because not everybody keeps some on hand like I do. So you have everything you need to mount this on your system and, and keep that CPU nice and cool while you're playing the latest titles. It's important to point out, if you look at the bottom of that heat pipe there, there's a little vinyl tag that says warning and such on top of it. You wanna make sure to remove that tag before placing that over your CPU, or else you'll have it in place, the fans will spin, you'll be playing your game, and all of a sudden, your computer will be catching on fire. Not literally, but it'll burn up. So make sure you take that fan off. That's an easy thing to uh, to mistakenly leave on, and it's, it's one of the most common things that people do when they're first building a system. Now, there's a lot of debate when it comes to actually how to put thermal paste on the CPU. In my opinion and experience, it really doesn't matter all that much as long as you're getting full coverage of that CPU heat spreader at the top once that chiller is placed over it. So in this case, I've placed it in an X. You can do several dots across the top. Some people like to put a big thread over it and spread it with a little spatula. Now, if you pay close attention, you remember how I said that it was easy to leave that vinyl piece on? Well, that's just what happened here. And off screen, I will have had to go back and remove it before completing this build so as not to repeat the exact same mistake that I had mentioned just before. So here we're plugging in the fans to the chiller tower itself, and then that adapter that I'm plugging them into will plug into our motherboard so that you're only taking up one of those CPU fan slots, which is great because this motherboard only has one. Next is our power supply unit, and, and there's a whole host of different types and price points of systems out there. Again, we're trying to keep this build to as cheap as possible without making it kneecapped. So what we found here is a 600 watt system by some secondary brand that was available on Amazon. This system again cost below $40 and should be powerful enough to run our processor and GPU that we'll be putting in later to handle gaming and such without bottlenecking the entire system. Now, as another tip, it's always handy when you're building a system to plug in the power supply 
connect your main power cables to the motherboard and really test this out before you take all the time to put it in the case, do all your cable management, just to find out that something may be wrong or you may not have uh, seated the CPU correctly and your system won't start. So at this point, we can plug it in, we can test it, we can at least make sure that the basic functions are there before we take all of the effort and then have to undo everything and add extra time and anguish to the process. Now it's always helpful before you plug anything in and have electricity running in just to test your pinouts there because what we're going to have to do is jump the system to make it start. You don't want to be poking around with a screwdriver or other piece of metal uh, with live electricity going through there. So we're actually now plugging in the system and we're jumping it and it turns on, the lights turn on, the fan goes on. You can see down there we've got the, the indicator that tells us if there's any errors on the board or its general boot process. So we're seeing that everything is functioning like we would expect before starting up. So we can shut it off and get moving on. So for our case, again, here's a sub $40 case that we found off of Newegg. It's a DIY PC brand. It's got a nice amount of airflow. It's got a front fan and a back fan and a little bit of RGB because that's always fun. Um, it's got your standard IO, three USB ports on top, a nice power button, a reset button, and room for your, your audio uh, connectors. On the back here, this is a micro ATX, so you've got your four slots. We've got a nice in back fan and ventilation. So here we're looking at the inside of the case, and fortunately, they already came with the standoffs installed for me, so I don't have to do that. So we'll get the screws out. Oh, that's cute. Who uses a speaker anymore? Um, well, I guess some people still like to hear that annoying buzzing as things start up. I don't, let's put it over here. Now, we'll start sorting all the screws, we'll get the board in, make sure everything is aligned before putting in our I.O. shield, and then we'll start getting this thing actually mounted safely in the system. Okay, now that everything lines up, we'll put the I.O. shield in. Did I mention that that's got to be one of the most basic I.O. shields I've seen in a very long time? I think the 1990s want their I.O. shield back. Now it's important to point out, they've gone through the process of setting off all those stand-ups for us in there. You want to, when you're screwing the motherboard in, you want to use as many of the screw points as you possibly can. There's been several times when I've seen a motherboard come out of a computer and it's only being held in by three or four screws. Sure, that's possible, but it's also a recipe for disaster. Now that that's all in and seated nicely, it's time to plug in our system fans onto the board. That way, you know, our controller can actually make sure that our case is staying nice and cool. So they've included the wiring for these fans for us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and untie these and then we'll go ahead and get them plugged in. Wait, is that Molex? <laughs> Nobody uses that anymore. We'll actually use the board connector. Again, we've got one of those ancient connectors, but we're gonna use the board connector instead. That way we've got better control over this. So, skipping ahead, cable management, cable management, cable management. 
We're gonna route our cables nice so that we don't have the rat's nest that many people make when they're, when they're putting one of these systems together. That just causes pain and anguish in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these through. I'm gonna run the lines for the power supply back. We'll get it all cable managed nicely and meet back with you in just a second. There we are, it's all nice and neat in the back. Once I'm happy with this, we can actually turn this around, start plugging in our front IO and our USB 3.0 ports, and then start plugging in our power and other ancillary systems. Now the nice thing about this case I forgot to point out is that there's plenty of room for expansion. You can put extra hard drives in that sled, or you can put some, some SSDs up on the side there. There's a lot of room in this, in this small case for expanding your amount of storage and by having a good cable management plan we're maximizing that space for later upgrades now for our gpu i was able to find a gigabyte rtx 2060 online these are still decent cards they're they're fully capable for playing many of the the modern titles you're probably not going to be playing cyberpunk at ultra high settings and getting great fps but for most of your gaming experiences they'll be perfectly usable so after fitting this card initially uh we found the two slots that's going to be so i'm going to punch those out which for some reason this case manufacturer still uses those annoying wiggle in and out to to get the cards out of, or the, the slot cards out of there so we'll go ahead and remove those. Can't put them back, but they're gone. And then we'll, we'll seat the card and move on. Now that our card's nice and seated, we've had that satisfying click to let us know that it's in there. We can plug in the one eight pin connector that this card requires. We'll kind of put the other uh, connector out of the way just to keep that cable management nice and tight. And then we're ready to start up. The moment of truth. Oh, the lights come on. No display. Um, hmm. Maybe a minute. There it is. Again, this is a machinist brand, so they've branded this. And this is BIOS reminiscent of anything that you would have seen maybe when you were a lot younger. It's a very utilitarian BIOS, but it looks like it's fully capable. Uh, we'll give it a go and then get on to installing Windows for this system. Now that we've got Windows installed, we're going to go ahead and run some benchmarking. This is Cinebench to test our CPUs. Again, I expect it to be fairly decent as we're running 14 cores. And here you can see it, it, it functions quite nicely with a score over 10,000. Let's do some gaming. Fortnite's pretty popular. Not that big of a Fortnite person, but, you know, it, I figure we might as well try it out. If you look up in the left there, you can see the stats of the GPU usage, temperature, CPU usage and temperature, and then our frame rates. The screen seems very responsive. Uh, there may be a little bit of stuttering, but I have just installed this game, so it's probably rendering quite a bit uh, the first time that it's played. But we'll go and see how much damage we can do here. I think it's important to point out at this point, I am not by any means a professional gamer, uh, nor am I really a professional tech person, just an enthusiast in this. So. Uh, you know, be kind in the comments. I forgot to mention earlier that this is being played at high settings. Uh, I did try Epic at first, and I was getting frame rates in about the, the 60 to 70 FPS, but this, keep bringing it down to high, really kind of made the gameplay a little smoother and bumped those FPS up to a much nicer level.
Well, that was intense, and and quite honestly, thank you guys for seeing one of the best games of Fortnite I think I've played in my life. Um, kind of fitting for this first video, uh, but you can see the game played really well. It's responded well. I I'm really happy with this system for for an under four hundred dollar all in system. This has performed better than I actually imagined when I when I started this up. So for a total all in cost of $391.16. This is a great system considering that similar price systems are found online but don't even have a graphics card installed in them. You're running off of the CPU and so this really blows them out of the water. But again, I'd like to thank you for joining me for my first video. If you like this, please give me a like, subscribe, ring the bell. If you want to see more, give me some comments. Let me know what you want to see moving forward.